All right, so the Buffalo Bills got it done again, winning four straight games against the Chiefs in the regular season. They move on to 9-2 and two with the Chiefs now 9-1. and one. So what went wrong and what are the biggest concerns and takeaways? Well, there's plenty to talk about from this one, so let's get into it. But first, how about those... <laughs> All right, let's get straight into it. The Bills won the toss and deferred with KC starting out with the ball. And on the second play of the game, the first pass of the game for the Chiefs offense, Mahomes scrambled up in the pocket, got hit, and tried to force the ball to a wide-open Noah Gray. It's a play he makes more times than not, but this time the ball sailed over Gray's head and was picked off by Taylor Rapp to give Josh Allen and company the ball basically right away. It's almost as if they opted to not defer, but also then got the benefit of getting the ball to start the third quarter. In hindsight, you take the minor sack if you're Patrick Mahomes, lose two yards, and that's going to set up a third and five, because after all, it was only second and three when he tried to force that ball to gray. Anyway, the Chiefs defense got what they want, kind of. You set up a favorable third and seven, but Allen saw Amari Cooper one-on-one -on -one with Nazi Johnson down the left side and lofted a nice pass to Coop, who hauled it in with one hand. This was a big theme for the Bills in this game. Basically target any non-McDuffie defensive back out there, but also their ability to convert several key third and longs was a big factor that also played into their success. I'll talk about both of those things later on in more detail because it's a cause of concern when you combine both of those things with the Chiefs front four basically unable to generate much pressure without blitz help. Anyway, after that, Shakir got involved for 11 and then again the Bills faced a long third and eight. Well, Curtis Samuel then not only caught one for seven, but Chamari Connor took a bad angle, missing his tackle, and Samuel got them up all the way to the three-yard line with James Cook finishing the job on an outside run. So that's an INT from Mahomes that Buffalo quickly turned into six, and it was only six because Tyler Bass missed the extra point. The Chiefs then went three and out after a coverage sack on third and four. Mahomes was pressured what seemed like a lot early on in this game and adjustments were eventually made to help mitigate it, but it was a rough start for the offensive line. Buffalo then found themselves facing a third and nine with Allen stepping up into the pocket and throwing a dart to Shakir for 15. Casey's defense remained stout against the run and on third and eight, McDuffie nearly sacked Allen and he smartly threw it away to set up the first punt of the night for Buffalo. From here, something surprising happened and on this drive for the Chiefs after this incredible one-handed pass was hauled in by DeAndre Hopkins and Kareem Hunt helped move the chains for a first down. The surprising thing was Xavier Worthy went absolutely bananas. He caught this 31-yard pass down the right side and maintained possession through contact for a big first down. Hunt and Caliendo, yes, Mike Caliendo caught a pass to help move the chains once more before Worthy caught his next pass for six. Then on third and four, Worthy caught a very quick 14-yard catch and run. In the very next play, Worthy went behind the line of scrimmage to catch his fourth pass and turn the corner using his speed to get in there for the score. This put KC up 7-6 to six after the PAT from the Chiefs' new kicker, while Butker is on IR with a knee injury. Spencer Schrader proved he's better than Tyler Bass. Kidding, of course, but the extra point was good. Buffalo then faced another third and nine. Shakir managed to catch this contested ball for eight, but FAU got flagged for a clear holding penalty to make it first down, so didn't really matter. Dawson Knox then had this big catch for 24 yards with Chanel trailing in coverage. Next up, Spags sent a blitz on second and 11, using McDuffie as one of them. Well, when McDuffie is blitzing, that means he's not out there in coverage. So, of course, Allen lofted up a 50-50 ball once again to Amari Cooper with Nazi in coverage, and Cooper adjusted perfectly to haul this one in for 25 yards. Andy Reid challenged the ruling on the field of it being a catch, but it was definitely a catch, so the play stood. And James Cook got his second rushing touchdown of the day on the very next play, showing he wanted the tutty more than three Chiefs defenders wanted to make a tackle to bring the Bills up 13-7. And here's a play worth talking about. Mahomes threw a deep ball to Worthy on the first play of this next series, and sadly, Worthy wasn't able to keep both feet in bounds. This would have had KC all the way up to the Bills' 30-yard line, a perfectly called deep shot that caught Buffalo off guard on first down. The problem was the execution just wasn't there. Mahomes got the ball out a bit late, according to Andy Reid, and on top of that, Mahomes said after the game, he threw him too close to the sideline, and instead, it should have been a touchdown. So, yeah, Worthy should have caught that pass 
maintained both feet and bounds, like just showing better sideline awareness has been an issue for Worthy, but it never needed to be that close to the sideline. Look at the coach's film. You can clearly see that if Mahomes doesn't lead Worthy to the sideline, that is most likely a walk-in touchdown to bring the Chiefs up 14-13. to Instead, Mahomes was hit as he threw on second and 10 and then sacked on the very next play for a depressing three and out. It's also worth noting that Xavier Worthy was never targeted again the rest of this entire game. And I really don't understand that. He was targeted four times on one drive, catching all four of those for 60 plus yards, including one of those being for a touchdown. But after a misconnect on a deep ball with 10-ish minutes to go in the second quarter, he was never targeted again. Maybe Buffalo adjusted well and took Worthy away the rest of the game. But my spidey senses Tell me, he could have been utilized a bit more than just the first quarter and a half of this game. Anyway, if we go back to that deep shot that was missed real quick, those are the plays you have to execute against a great team because these games normally come down to the end and is decided by whichever team makes one or two more key plays. Well, speaking of making plays, Codrington, the Bills returner, caught the Ariza punt and took it 25 yards upfield to set up another favorable field position drive for their offense. Chris Jones got pressure on Allen as they faced another long third and nine, but Allen escaped like he often does and scrambled upfield for seven yards to set up a fourth and three that they opted to go for. Well, I'm not exactly sure what Allen saw here, but he threw a costly interception to Chamari Connor, who took it upfield for 29 yards. That was Allen's fifth interception in just four games, and this gave Mahomes and company some pretty nice field position themselves. Noah Gray then started heating up, taking this screen upfield for 14 yards. Hardman took a jet sweep for nine with Steele moving the chains on third and one. From there, Mahomes threw a bit of a risky pass as he scrambled right to tight end Peyton Hendershot, but he caught it. Nice catch there, and that got Kansas City up to the two couple of unsuccessful plays later that set up third and goal and the Chiefs rolled out with this diamond formation on the left side. Mahomes then fired one quickly to Noah Gray for the score to go up 14 to 13. So yes, that was a great drive with each QB now throwing an INT that turned into a tutty for the opposing team, but I couldn't help but still think about that missed deep shot to Worthy on the drive prior to this because had that been a walk-in touchdown, the Chiefs would have went up 21-13 to here and things would have looked way different at this point in the game with just under three minutes to go in the second quarter. To Buffalo's credit, they were able to run a nice three-minute offense, two-minute-ish offense. It was just under three minutes and they went 12 plays for 65 yards. This was helped by a 21-yard pass to Samuel who held onto the ball as Jaden Hicks laid the wood. They then converted a third and one and were able to actually get all the way up to the 14 yard line after Mac Hollins caught this one for 12 yards. Thankfully, Casey's defense held strong here. The Bills were out of timeouts and they had to play the sideline and ended up having to settle for a 33 yard Tyler Bass field goal to make it 14 to 16 Chiefs trailing by two heading into the half. The third quarter started out with the defense doing their thing with four straight punts in a row taking place. So both defenses were Teeing off at this point, Mike Dana batted down a nice pass, and Allen threw in a triple coverage on third and seven to set up punt number one. Kareem Hunt had a nice seven-yard run, but the Chiefs could not move the chains on third and one, with Hunt getting absolutely stuffed, which led to punt number two. The Bills then used their tight ends to move the chains, with Knox catching this one for seven on third and three. The next third down, though, Allen missed Shakir, which resulted in punt number three. Punt number four in a row came after a nice catch was made by D-Hop for 13 yards to give the Chiefs their first first down of the half. Hardman then moved them another 12 yards upfield, and Mahomes scrambled very close to a first down next, but a holding penalty on Wanye Morris was called and moved them back 10 yards. D-Hop almost made this incredible grab down the field, but couldn't haul it in. It was definitely a tough catch to make, so no uh, fault there in my opinion. Then on third and 14, Kelsey was stopped way short of the first, so after four punts, this is where the second half action truly began, and this also included a missed call on the Bills resulting in a touchdown that if would have happened to KC, the entire world would have melted down. But before I get to that, most of you, just like me, live very busy lives, and the time it takes to prep fresh meals, especially for lunch, is not the easiest thing to do, and that's why the sponsor of today's video, Factor, takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. Factor allows you to skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue to instead get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door that are ready to eat in just two minutes. Factor's not only cheaper than overpriced cookout, but trust me, it's way 
way more delicious. These quick lunches allow me personally to spend more time making content for you all, and the best part is, you can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options to fit your lifestyle. Examples are Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan and Veggie, among others. I've been using them for over a year now, and Factor has not disappointed. I got more keto meals this go-round since I eat pretty low carb, and once again, the creamy pesto pork chop was Incredible! A close second was the queso fundido and ground beef, followed by the pesto bacon and tomato chicken bake. I mean, let's be honest, it was all good. Plus, I had the apple beet ginger cold pressed juice that's only 100 calories to sip on in the afternoon, and it was a near perfect day. And if you want to enjoy great meals like these and save time on grocery trips, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 50HBTC to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first factor box. Again, that's code 50. HBTC at factor75.com to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first box. All right, so after those four punts, here's where things started to heat up for both teams, starting with Buffalo, because on third and nine, Allen lofted a nicely placed ball to Curtis Samuel that probably would have been caught unless Connor perfectly timed a PBU, and sadly, Connor was early and drew a clear DPI to move the chains. From there, the Bills began matriculating the ball down the field as Chamari Connor missed another open field tackle on a bad angle, and Shakir went upfield for 22 yards as the third quarter came to an end. Several runs brought them to the 12, and then this play here was Curtis Samuel getting wide open for a 12-yard touchdown. The replay showed a mesh concept where Mac Hollins basically tackled Nazi Johnson, who was trailing in coverage on the Curtis Samuel, and then he was knocked off the route and fell over. That's basically grounds for an OPI call, but there was no flag, and the touchdown stood. And honestly, part of me, I guess, is fine uh, with the no call here, the missed call, because it happens from time to time in every single game. The refs miss calls. It's part of football, and again, happens every game on both sides of the ball. The Chiefs had opportunity to win this game even without that missed call. Call. I do find this a bit funny, though, because there was no meltdown online about this from the masses after the Bills ended up winning. I mean, just imagine if the roles were reversed. Something happens that allows a wide open touchdown for the Chiefs and it was a missed potential OPI call. There would have been a literal meltdown of tears being shed with the Chiefs once again getting bailed out by the refs. It just honestly goes to show the hypocrisy that exists right now simply because People are tired of the Chiefs winning. If the Chiefs win, it's the refs. Even on a blocked field goal against uh, the Broncos, it was a second quarter flag that the refs helped bail the Chiefs out so they could win that game. But if the Chiefs lose, oh yeah, it was definitely a fairly officiated game. You simply can't win with these people, and this is just further proof that the average person, they're not really looking at these games objectively. In fact, some are admitting they are prepared to go hunt down a play that the refs may have missed if the Chiefs win simply as a coping mechanism. But again, the reality is calls or no calls happen like this all the time, no matter who's playing. And at the end of the day, listen to what I say here. At the end of the day, the team that makes the most plays in clutch situations is going to be the one that typically comes out with a W, which we will see here in a moment, was not the Kansas City Chiefs, regardless of that call. The touchdown that Curtis Samuel just had, that put the Bills up 23-14 to with just under 13 minutes to go. And with KC trailing by nine, a sense of urgency kicked in that I honestly wish we would see from KC much earlier on in some of these games. They proceeded to march down the field seemingly with ease. Kareem Hunt ran for his longest of the season. D-Hop caught this nice quick slant for 11 in between two defenders. Justin Watson corralled a perfectly placed ball, I think on an out route from Pat for 16, and that very quickly brought KC into the red zone. A screen pass to Juju brought them to the five and an obvious DPI on D-Hop, tried to jump for the ball but was being hugged like he was at prom, brought KC to the one. From there, Kareem unsuccessfully tried to dive over this pile, and then Noah Gray snagged this ball as he extended the play, ran to his right in the back of the end zone, and that was Gray's second touchdown of the game, and the first time he's had multiple scores in a game in his career, if my research is correct. And with that score, KC KC moved the ball 70 yards, 10 plays, and just under five minutes of game time to make it 21 to 23. So you're trailing by two with eight minutes left to go in this game. And so the defense just needs a stop here, and maybe the Chiefs could pull out a hard-fought win after all is said and done. 
Well, Mac Hollins immediately caught a pass for 15 yards. Then Quentin Morris was open deep down the field, but Allen thankfully underthrew him. It didn't matter, though, because they moved the chains on third and one after a quick Allen scramble. A couple plays later, KC had Buffalo where they wanted him, though. At the 45-yard line, the Chiefs' 45-yard line just across midfield, they were facing third and nine. Well, if you get a stop here, I doubt Buffalo tries to kick a field goal from here, and KC gets the ball back with like four-ish minutes to go, only down by two. You have the two-minute warning, all three timeouts, but instead... Shakir made a tough contested grab for the first down after Spags sent pressure from that side. A few plays later, the Bills faced a third and two from the Chiefs' 26-yard line and the run defense stonewalled Johnson for zero yards. So Buffalo has a decision on their hands. They either kick a field goal here on fourth and two to go up five, but that gives the Chiefs roughly two-ish minutes to go and all three timeouts. So they said, screw that. We've seen that play out way too many times. We're not giving the ball back to Mahomes and company only up five. Or maybe even only at two if Tyler Bass, who is not always consistent, misses that field goal. So they ultimately made the correct call, opting to go for it on fourth down with the game pretty much on the line here. The Chiefs surprised Allen on this fourth down for a couple of reasons. The first, they were in zone coverage and the Bills ran a man beater play. So honestly, uh, the Chiefs made a good call, a good play call here. They were anticipating something different, threw the Bills off guard a little bit, but their mistake was they did not put a spy on Josh Allen. And that was probably Josh Allen's second surprise. He had no spy on fourth and two, and he uses his legs more than just about any other quarterback. So that when the coverage held up, Allen opted to sprint upfield instead to get the first down. Well, not only did he do that, but he made multiple defenders miss, and he trucked his way into the end zone for the score. Some of you might be like, Cole, why are you laughing? I laugh through pain. And when I say football is a game of inches, look at George Karloftis on this play. He was inches away from slapping Allen's elbow on a swipe. I have no idea if it would have caused a fumble, but you never know. Either way, I'm pretty surprised here that Spags did not put a spy on Allen because I felt like what Allen did there in this situation was a very Josh Allen thing to do with the game on the line. Use his legs. He executed that to perfection and literally willed his team to yet another victory on the year and another victory in the regular season over the Kansas City Chiefs. Even if he didn't score here, I think the game was probably over if somebody tackled him shy of the goal line because you could potentially drain out the clock to go up five with no time left if you kick a field goal there or depending on how many first downs they'd be able to get, there's a scenario where they could find themselves in victory formation, kneeling it out without even needing to kick a field goal at all, and you win by two. The point is, once that fourth and two was converted, it was basically over. Sure, the Chiefs got the ball back one more time with a chance to try and score a touchdown, get the onside kick, and score again before the clock expired, but the odds of that happening were extremely low. Mahomes targeted P. Ryan on checkdowns, three straight plays, then hit Justin Watson on a pass that was dropped, yet somehow ruled a catch to set up fourth and three. It didn't matter, though, because Mahomes had a nice run for a first down, 20-ish or so yards off the top of my head, but Jawan Taylor got flagged with the holding call to negate it, and that set up a fourth and 13 with Mahomes taking a shot, a prayer throw to Kelsey. It was picked off, and the game was officially over, resulting in Casey's first loss of the season. Let's cut the BS here. No excuses. Buffalo earned the win. They made more plays when it mattered. And because of that, they walk away with a W. So tip of the cap to a good team there. And at the end of the day for the Chiefs, it's not a horrible loss. You lost a pretty close one to one of the biggest contenders in the entire AFC and maybe even in the entire NFL. Sure, it was a nine point game by the end. There were opportunities for Kansas City to win this game. They just didn't execute on a few key plays, whereas Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills did. Now, with that being said, I have concerns on both sides of the ball, but let's look at defense first here. Casey's D allowed six different third and longs to be converted, a third and six that went for 30 yards, a third and nine for 15 more, a third and eight for 15 more again, and a third and nine for 10. Remember, the Bills' final drive involved a pretty key third and nine, and then on top of that, there were two more third and nines that the Bills faced, and both were quote-unquote converted due to defensive penalties, a holding on FAU and a DPI on Chamari Connor. So the defense got third and long quite a bit, which is what you want, but they couldn't make key stops as the Bills converted nine of 15 third downs. Again, six of those were long third downs and one of two fourth downs with the last being the game ceiling touchdown run by Josh Allen. Outside of that, the run defense did hold strong. So 
you got to give credit there. That is probably the main bright spot of the Kansas City Chiefs defense once again. But the Bills resorted to passing down the field and in the flat to basically negate their inability to run. And they were targeting any non-Trent McDuffie defender in the process to make this happen. You can see here on the screen that McDuffie, he was targeted three times and gave up just one reception for one yard. But then here's a look at most of the other guys out there. Justin Reed gave up four catches on four targets for 34 yards. Bolton gave up four on five targets for 20 yards. Chamari Connor gave up five catches on six targets for 55 yards. He did have a couple of missed tackles over pursuing as well, though to his credit, he had that nice interception earlier on in the game. But then Nazi Johnson got the worst of it all, allowing nine receptions on 12 targets for 103 yards and a touchdown. The clear game plan for the Bills was to see where McDuffie lined up and throw the opposite side of the field. And more times than not, that was Nazi Johnson, who had the worst coverage grade out there, but also played 73 snaps on defense, I think it was. He played every single snap on the defensive side of the ball whenever they were out there. And we all know Nazi Johnson is the homie. He's been on this channel a couple times for interviews, uh, but it was a rough game for him overall. Honestly, the Bills offense is very good. They put up 30 on the Chiefs defense without Kincaid or Keon Coleman. Those 30 points, by the way, was the first time an opponent has put up 30 or more on the Chiefs since Super Bowl 57 against the Eagles. So yeah, the secondary definitely misses Legereus Sneed, we know that, but he's gone. But they also desperately miss Jalen Watson, who broke his ankle and is out maybe until the playoffs. I don't know when he's going to return, if at all, this season. But there's not much you can do about that unless maybe you opt to sign a free agent. Uh, if you don't do that, because there's not many available, you just got to trust the guys who are there in the room. You got Keith Taylor, Chris Roland Wallace as available options, as well as Joshua Williams. But Nazi seems to be the guy they trust over those guys as of right now. The other concern of the defense is, outside of Chris Jones and George Karloftis, no other defensive lineman recorded more than three pressures. So you have to blitz to get pressure, yet when you do that, Josh Allen has the highest EPA in the league against the blitz, and yesterday proved exactly why. I was a bit confused as to why they traded for Joshua Uche, he's been here almost a month now, yet he only played five snaps in this game, and he's a guy that you were supposed to add as a pass rush option on definite passing downs. He barely got used. Then, when you can't get home with four, it makes things pretty tough, and when you do get home, Josh Allen oftentimes is able to get the heck out of Dodge and extend the play. He is a legit problem to go up against. Allen was the team's leading rusher, after all, carrying the ball 12 times for 55 yards in that rushing TD, but then also completed 27 to 40 passes for 262 yards and one touchdown in the air, plus that one INT to Chamari Connor, Khalil Shakir, Curtis Samuel, and Amari Cooper all had over 40 receiving yards as well. Meanwhile, the only player on Kansas City's side of the ball on offense to record over 40 yards was Xavier Worthy. He had four catches for 61 yards and a score, all in one drive early on in the game. Outside of that, D-Hop had three for 29. Justin Watson had two for 26. Noah Gray had three for 23 and two scores. So nice job, Noah Gray. And then Travis Kelsey, he had just two catches for eight yards. And he said today that Buffalo did a good job bracketing both Kelsey and D-Hop, but that allows others to step up and make plays. Something else worth noting is the Chiefs only scored on three of their nine drives. Meanwhile, Buffalo scored on five of their 10 drives and the Bills, when they had the ball, led the time of possession by quite a bit, keeping the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. They had 34 minutes time of possession compared to the Chiefs only having 26. All in all, when a defense allows 30 or more points, it's pretty difficult for a team to win said game, regardless of how good the offense is. See the Bengals, for example, if you don't believe me. However, Casey's offense was very close to still putting 28 points up themselves via that misconnect on the worthy deep ball. And I guess I will say that is a concern I do have for the offense. Mahomes has been off this year at times, especially on the deep ball, which hasn't been helped by a revolving door of pass catchers due to all the injuries that he has to then build new rapport with and an offensive line that has been struggling, especially on his blind side. I mean, look at this. Mahomes was sacked 27 times last year in 16 games played, but he's already been sacked 
22 times in 10 games played this year. 10 of those sacks have happened, by the way, in the last three games. So yeah, does Mahomes need to be better at times and hit key throws, especially down the field? Absolutely. Is he also rushing his reads and throws down the field even at times when he doesn't need to because of his lack of trust that the line is going to hold up? Also, absolutely. It's a combination of things right now and with many in Chiefs Kingdom calling, clamoring, begging for a veteran like Donovan Smith, or insert other free agent into the equation. Uh, They want him to come in and uh, play. I can understand why. Shoot, I'm fine with Donovan Smith even just being a depth piece because Wanye has been playing decent. He actually has a lower pressure rate allowed than Donovan Smith did last year, uh, which is pretty wild to think about, but... I'm terrified about the left side if Wanye goes down. Kingsley was so bad two games ago that the Chiefs made him inactive for the Bills game. That's right. He didn't even dress out at all with the undrafted rookie Ethan Driscoll being the next man up had Wanye went down due to injury. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts on the Chiefs' biggest issues from Sunday's loss against uh, the Bills. Are you overly concerned about the cornerback room outside of McDuffie? Is it the tackles along the offensive line or the lack of pressure created by the D-line? The good news here is Charles Minahue will be back in the next week or two. That's going to add some extra juice on the D-line. Isaiah Pacheco is reportedly set to return this week in the game against the Panthers. Yes, that is the Chiefs' next game. Should be an easy W, hopefully. But you might have Isaiah Pacheco back for that as well. And then I don't know what they're going to do about the cornerback room. But let me know your thoughts on all that in the comments down below. But before I get out of here, I did want to mention that the Chiefs signed a new speedy receiver to their practice squad today, a former second-round pick that runs a 4 2 in Taekwon Thornton. So if you want to know more about him, I dove into that signing in much greater detail in this video here. So check it out if you want to know more. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?